Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, and this is everybody that we're expecting. Jonathan and Tim both said that they would not be able to attend tonight. Yeah, so this is the full. Uh, motion on last month's minutes. Motion. Second. Discussion. I wasn't here, so I can't discuss them. The governor said you can vote. Yeah. <laughs> Every time. The governor said you can vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Does that uh, Zoe report? Yes. All right. Um, operations, uh, nothing to report in the past month aside from... Um, so we respond to <clears throat> primarily to an area covered by four different fire departments. Um, and last summer, fall, we had a number of rescues in the woods up, you know, on the ridge or on Mount Toby or, you know, along the river, things like that. And so we interact with all these other fire departments. And in our internal debriefing, we realized that um, everybody's capabilities is always a little bit different so we're not quite sure what we're going to get when we get on scene and, and things like that so we reached out to south deerfield fire because they have their utv they have um, full-time staffing during the day um, and a lot of nice equipment to go along with that some additional safety equipment and stuff like that so we're coordinating with them they're going to put together a like a, a, a training program and orientation program for us so on their drill nights and and elsewhere we can uh, interface we can exercise using the stokes and how it attaches and they've already been making recommendations and the fire department has already received them about adding a bracket for our monitor and things like that so um, we're going forward with that and what it's going to mean is that south county ems if we think that there will be some sort of rescue or something we will request a co-response with south deerfield fire since we'll have already trained on that and then the local um, fire department or, or agencies, you know, they aren't double tasked or whatever. Sure. Ultimately, it is up to the local fire chief who has jurisdiction. So there's a little bit of politics there. Um, and that's all that's all being worked through. All the all the chiefs I've talked to now are like, yeah, 100 percent. Like, you know, if, if you're comfortable and you're trained with that, like, by all means, request them. But just making sure that that trickles down and, um, mm -hmm. you know, we don't have any sort of uh, uh, confusion on scene if we're going to. This is excellent. This is the kind of stuff I love to see. Um, and if you need equipment, this is the kind of stuff, especially one-off, start-up kind of yeah. equipment. If this is what you need, this is what Homeland Security would support. This is what John Bichorek and myself would support on the full council. And so keep that in mind when you're sorting this out, that you know, you could get some funding from homeless Yeah, yeah, and part of the nice thing with this too is, um, you know, one of the problems that we identified is that personal protective equipment, you know, and we weren't gonna go out and buy, you know, whatever, bump helmets and overalls and all that stuff for us just in the off chance, but South Deerfield Fire does have extra bump helmets and, and things uh, for riding in the UTV that you're supposed to. So they've already established like, oh, you know, these are our lending <laughs> out, personal protective equipment so we don't have to uh, absorb um, that cost and stuff. When you go out in the woods, are you using any um, pernethrin or anything like that on you for ticks? Uh, uh, not by like policy, we don't, we don't issue that. I, people are, you know, obviously, people have their own like little like purses or response bags that they have their and like clamp-ons and things like that. So I don't know what people are carrying, but I see where you're well, going with this. Well, one one of the things that um, this is really cheap. It's just like five ninety nine or six ninety nine. You can get a bottle of Bronco horse spray, like a Tractor Supply, and it's got enough perithin in them that uh, it's very effective. You know, the tick, ticks die when they come in contact with it. Yeah. All right. And it's you know it's for it's bug spray, so it's good for mosquitoes too. But Basically, you should. It's for clothes. It's mm -hmm. not to spray on your body. Right. But if people, if you're going to go out in the woods, I would really like us to get in the habit of just spraying down your clothes, so that you don't have ticks. You just lift up your pant a little bit. Make sure you get your sock. Yep. Get your shoe yep. really good, and then put down your pant and then. Just spray your pants a little bit. That's that's good advice. Um, our uniform policy is that we all have to wear long pants and, and sturdy footwear and things like that anyway. So thankfully, you know, we're not like in Florida where you're in 
you know, shorts and stuff when you're at work, but that's that's good. I'll I'll make sure to get past along. It's it's real cheap, but it's the most effective thing. Bronco horse spray. Yeah, you're right. a tractor supply back. This is not constituted endorsement. Story. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, it's just you know, there's you don't need to have you don't need to buy all this fancy stuff. You can you know, that's the basic thing. And um, it'll, it'll go through wash. Uh, Budget. Paramedic McComb, she is like a tenacious, I don't know what the right animal would be, but she has hit the ground running going after grants. She's really taken it on as her kind of passion project, which is awesome and part of the reason why, um, you know, she was such a good catch for this department. So she recently uh, went for a third cardiac monitor upgrade, upgrade to bring our third ambulance up to the paramedic level, uh, brought that in front of Homeland Security Council. It was kind of a long shot to begin with, um, just because of the things that that council typically funds what their mission is. Uh, so we did not receive that, but we still have our assistance to firefighter <coughs> grant um, in the works. I guess it's we've been applied. We won't know until fall whether or not we've received it. Um, we may know sooner if we do receive it. Um, there's also a micro grant in that application for a cardiac monitor, so that could just be awarded separately. Mm -hmm. um, there's also the firehouse subs, the the restaurant yeah. chain. They have a public safety grant program that is just constantly rolling um, over and over again. And Lori reached out to them. They said, you know, typically we we award grants to areas where we have a presence, right. um, but they said please apply usually, you know, if we see the same people a few times through with a decent um, decent ask, and that cardiac monitor for $50,000 is actually a pretty short reach compared to what a lot of departments are asking for. So they said, just keep at it. So she keeps she keeps throwing her hat in the ring there. So we've got these these other grants that are out, and hopefully we'll, we'll see something back. Uh, um, one thing that I would like her to do, if, if it's all possible, is to apply for the USDA um, grant um, equipment grant. Now they don't have any funding for this year left, but um, the new funding will come in September. So if her, um, you know, September 30th is a federal cycle. Yep. So if her application is in, um, and especially with the IRA money, they might get a new slug of money between now and um, because it's all going to the different agencies. So when they get their IRA money, it might they might just refund it between now and September, or there is going to be additional funding plus the small amount that's usually available. But right. I would put it in for the ambulance. I know she is aware of the USDA grant. It's on her radar. So whether she's started that application or okay. whatever, I don't know exactly where she is on that specific one. We looked at the USDA grant back in like 2014 or 15, at the time the rep from USDA said we didn't qualify because we had a funding stream, which was those retained earnings. Obviously things have changed now. Um, so uh, she's been in contact again with the USDA field office and they think that we should Well, obviously. not only all the select boards will write a letter of support, but Jim McGovern said that he would write a letter of support for us because he's the one that pointed this out to us when we met, met with him about, you know, some of the problems we're encountering with. Great you know, costs going up and stuff. And these monitors are also in your capital budget? Yeah, so separate of these grant applications, the Board of Oversight voted two meetings ago, so before, I forget when that was, um, that both of the existing monitors, which are non-repairable and nearing end of life in a couple of years anyway, <laughs> plus that third one to get us up, um, should be ordered immediately and the turnaround time on that is a, like over a year. So if we ordered it now, we wouldn't see it for at least 12 months anyway. So the capital request um, is in to purchase, order and purchase those three monitors out of available existing retained earnings. That went before the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, and I don't know where it sits right now. We haven't prioritized it, but it will we'll vote yes because it's, retained earnings is not a, a raise and appropriate and and that was submitted as and a, that was already voted by the board too yeah so. that was submitted as an fy 23 request so as soon as that gets um, approved we can we can put that order in that, and yeah i was just going to say 
you should be here in another um, great. We have a meeting on Thursday. So we might um, even be have it by Thursday. That's great. That's really great. I know there was uh, some discussion during that meeting about whether it needed to wait until FY24 and and like no, it we need to do it now in the FY23. Yeah. So and then, I think the only reason that it wasn't voted through they just wanted to know if it was an option to lease an ambulance. Oh, so yeah, so um um uh, I'm just taking the minutes at the same time here. Uh, the ambulance. So at the same Board of Oversight meeting, um, just to rehash, the ambulance that used to cost $250,000 now costs $350,000. I thought you said three seventy five. dollars Sure, th okay. at three sixty seven, dollars whatever it is, yeah. Um, it's over $100,000 more. Uh, and... Um, the fact that we were already coming up short, plus the immediate need for the monitors, the decision was made, you know what, the difference, which was gonna be 250 or $260,000, put it on a capital request budget, put it to the three towns, and just see, see if they're interested in, in taking on that burden. Really like, as a board of oversight, we can decide that this is important to us, but let the towns decide whether or not they have the money and where it's gonna come from. So that was a separate capital budget and is divided up the same way our regular budget is. So by the intermunicipal agreement, the 51%, the 20 whatever percent. I've presented in Sunderland and Deerfield so far. I don't know. I mean, I wasn't getting any like huffs and shakes of the head at either of these meetings, but I have no idea you know, financially where the towns sit, um, what that is. And, and because of the way that that budget is set, um, if one town decided that they could not fund their portion, it would, it would make the whole thing basically uh, dead in the water um, because we wouldn't have that, that mutual spending there. So I don't know where that, and I don't know when we'll know for those budgets, well, but. Uh, the problem is there's no, uh, I mean, we're, we're short. So um, I think we're short. We're sure. trying to cover like 200,000. So it's highly unlikely that a separate warrant article raise an appropriate would pass. Yeah, I us. think Deerfield's share is like a hundred something thousand yeah. on that. I, I don't, I don't think. Well, yours or your ambulances? Uh, one and two. So our our thought was to kick, it, kick the ambulance to the FY twenty five. Yeah, I think. As a capital project. Yeah, I well, I I don't know how we would come up with the cash. I think, I think there are two problems, right? One is that ambulance needs to be replaced. And I think, you know, it needs to be replaced and it should have, you know, in a perfect world been replaced already, but we've made it work. Um, the other problem is, okay, how do we pay for it? Where do we find the money? And so if there is no money to replace it now, it doesn't change the fact that it needs to be replaced, but like we can't afford it. The question of leasing came up. Um, in fact, I was visited again by Skip yesterday morning here who wanted to mention it again. It's something I'm looking into. Um, I know some communities do lease. Um, the nice thing is you don't have to come up with all the money uh, to begin with. The downside is you're ultimately paying more for the ambulance. Um, and not necessarily. Not necessarily. You're paying for the depreciation, right? And so um, I need to look into it. I know it's not a quote-unquote popular option, um, but I need to... I need to speak to the departments that have done that and ask them what that looks like, um, pr practically Because we do have, I mean, if you take out the 150 for the monitors, uh, you, we still have 100 left. So you could use that towards the leasing mm -hmm. and, and see if, you know, well, that's a viable as, option. As, as, let's just review. You don't have, if, if you don't have the money this year to put it forward, but you'd have the money in two years when we expect it to be paid, when it's supposed to, supposed, supposed to be coming in, right? Uh, yes, but... Mm -hmm. So you, you've, always, you've always bought things cash. I'm going to say cash. Yes, yep. I, I don't think that... I, I think that if you talk to your treasurer collector, I think there's a ways that you can lease do it. Lease to own. Huh? Lease to own. Right, you do a lease yep. to own. Right. We, we do that in some on our trucks, on, on, our, on our highway trucks. And we've done that pretty successfully. I don't think, I don't think we end up paying anything. You know, you, you're paying basically a finance charge. 
So we did that on the mini excavator, so maybe that's yeah. But you do it right, and and but also I'd also talk to you. I'd also talk to to your treasure collector because because you don't have the money to buy. You want to have the money before you put the order in. Well, I think we're required to have the money. Would it either. Uh, we need it allocated, whether it's like voted and approved at town meeting or in the account. Yeah. So, so you you can vote, you can you can vote to to borrow the money, but then when you're getting ready to come through, you not not borrow any money if you have that money available. To you. And 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 two years and well, next year at this time we'll have that money available. Right. And so you don't seven, have money this year. And it's, what is it, the wait line, the wait time, 700 days? 700 days is one of the last yeah. quotes I heard, yeah. yeah. So when you pay, when you, when you pay for, when you pay for the truck, when you take delivery. Right. Right. And we would have, right? in two years, yep. we, in two years we'd have the money. Right. Um, so you're going to have the money. So, so if, if, the, right. if, Let if me, you say, if you say to the town today, if you, I'll ask Brenda. Right. If you say to the town today, we want you to, to, to borrow 350000 to the three towns, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're borrowing it, but you're, we're not going to borrow it because we're going to have the money in two years. We're going to have the right. money. Interesting. Interesting. We, yeah, we right. will ensure that the truck does not get delivered prior to July 1, 2025. I mean... Now you're asking me to do math in my head, but well, I mean, yeah, I probably, yeah, yeah. right? Because it'll be 23, July 1, 2023 20, 20, this year, so two years would be July 1 of 25. It, it would probably, yeah. Not any sooner. Yeah. Actually, so probably June, June of 25. I, I was going to say maybe early 20. I mean, I don't know what's yeah. going to happen as, so, but to, to, but you got to take your point before. Is, yes, yes, yes. yes July of 25, you could put a motion forward to allocate the money from capital capital expense fund capital reserves explaining that we're not going to actually spend the money we need to make sure it's allocated so if it was to get delivered early it could actually be paid for well but we'll make sure it doesn't get delivered well before. that was the point of the cardiac monitors that we, you know there's 14 months right wait list or wait time on that that you know end of life is in two years yeah. Let's get on the wait list, and maybe between now and then we can have a grant. Yeah. And that's really what we're trying, Lori's trying with the right. ambulance, is trying to find a grant for the ambulance. Yeah. I think we have a good story for the USDA, and if we have McGovern's endorsement, Scott yeah. Soares is the, he used to be an Ag Commissioner here in Massachusetts, so he's really, I mean, I know him really well, and he came and visited, and he said, apply for it. So. Great. I. I, I too think that we have some really good shots at some of these grants. Yeah. Um, so so, but I guess what I'm saying I, I'm saying that you're not you, you they just want to have the funding in play. You can you can you can pass a thing that you're going to borrow the money, but you're not going to use the money. I, it's just I I, I, I asked the um, you know CIPC if they would support like cardiac monitors for this year 2023. Right. And they were fine with that. Yeah. So, so I think I'll, I think you're I'll all I think you're all set to order. You just have to, yeah. Brenda. I think, and you weren't going to order anyway till town meeting, right? Uh, yes, right. So I, I don't think it's a problem for Deerfield because we're not going to have to borrow. No, we'd money. have to. Yeah, we'd have to vote at town meeting because right. also the CIPC does is recommend. <clears throat> town but right. usually, what we recommend people. Correct. Support. Do we pay for the chassis on the truck separate from the rest of it? Or I believe it we long? cut a check for the chassis early on, mm -hmm. um, but that's fifty thousand, sixty thousand. It's yeah. under the one hundred thousand that you know we right. would have available in the retained earnings. I think that that gets paid to Ford or whoever it is right. immediately, and then to once order it. Yes. Okay. And then once it's delivered, they manufacture it, and then we pay the balance. So we have okay. to wait till after town meeting to yeah. order it. You have to wait anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You can lose but, the cash. Yes, but you're right. We wouldn't need to. You wouldn't need to pass the the CIP. Yeah. And it's not really. Yeah. You're not really spending it. Yeah. And then you get to town meeting when you got the money. Well, when the town and meeting you, authorizes it, he could cut the check. You can get the check cut to get in line. You wouldn't even for have to the cut chassis. a check. 
Well, I think you do for the chassis, right? You have to cut so the he has it in 50. He has the money in retained yeah. earnings. Yeah. No, I know. That's what I mean. We have yeah. the ability to cut the check yeah. Yeah. to get in line. Right. Yes. Oh, yeah. And so you should be okay. Yeah, the, the, right. And by then, you know, right. Exactly. All right. Yeah. I have to ask Brenda exactly how we have to do this. Oh, it's, it's just yeah. like just like when you take out a van, you know, just like it's just like when you take out, a, you 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 build a building. The building's and you're living in a year before you actually get your first, More. your first payment comes up. Yeah, I know. So I, I've never understood how municipal, but they're crazy like that. Yeah, I know. Well, but use it to our advantage. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. Um. Overtime. Overtime. So, um, when when I did this budget, right, that was like October, November when I crunched those numbers. Um, and so, I was going off of the historical data available to me then. Um, since then, we've had more data, uh, particularly both the additional full-time staff um, who were brought on uh, in March of 22, um, but this January, um, we, we changed schedules. Um, I know I kept making hay about that. Mm -hmm. uh, part of the reason was to increase this flexibility within the schedule. So looking back, when we only had eight full-timers, we were averaging 77 hours of overtime a month. When we increased that to 10 full-timers, um, it dropped to 53 hours a month. So cut it by 30%. And then as of January 1st, when we changed that schedule, um, it's dropped another 30%. So granted, we're like, we're shy of three months, right? So right. we're only working with, you know, less than mm -hmm. the first quarter, but we're already seeing on average 38 hours a month. Um, and that's, that's extrapolated out, you know, by weeks and, and things like that. Um, which means that the calculation in my spreadsheet for how much overtime spending we would need to do was based on the old numbers. Um, so I've, I've recalculated that, I've reduced it, um, and it reduced that line item uh, by $15,000. 50%? I think it's 30%, uh, right? I think it's, it was like 70 something and it came down to 50 30. something. Um, uh, which makes sense, right? If the overtime is decreasing by about 30%. Um, then so would that, um, that expense. Zach, is there, uh, I mean, I, the select board, I mean, like, we're asking each department to really make an effort to look at their expenses, and is there any way you can get that down to, you know, like 35,000? No. No is the short answer. We, um, I, I've, I've crunched this every which way. Um, the only ways to reduce that, where am I? The only ways to eliminate that number is either, there's one of two ways. We either don't spend it, so we don't backfill, which means we go down to one person, you know, at times, and we try to limit the impact, so, you know, overnight we only have one person or something like that. But we won't have a transporting ambulance available to us. We will be able to respond with one, but we would be relying on mutual aid. And we would be, we would be under the eye of DPH at that point, because they're like, you're, you're telling us you run an ambulance and you don't for these hours, so, mm -hmm. so what's your plan? The other option would be to increase the number of people on duty scheduled all of the time from say two to three so if somebody calls out sick you know we don't have to find somebody else to come in and cover and because the overtime is for the entire year what is it a thousand hours for the entire department over the entire year 1100 that's half of a full-time person so even if you could like hire one person 20 hours part-time, pay them benefits, you still wouldn't know when to schedule them because the whole point of this is that this is happening unexpectedly. Um, Can you um, schedule yourself to be that third person on, on like, I, work day? I, I routinely cover um, second ambulance uh, and even first ambulance 
when we have things like that happen. And I adjust my shift and I come in Friday nights or you know Saturday during the days to cover when I need to. Um, it's I, I I think I, it's just it's the nature of the beast. Um, I did. Uh, Tim Hilchey asked that very interesting question at the last board of oversight meeting where he was looking at that ratio of the overtime line item to the salary line item. And he noticed for us, you know, it had been hovering around 10% and starting to creep up a little bit. And he just wanted to know how did that compare uh, to other departments and whether that was like a valid metric. And I was like, that's a, that's a great <coughs> question. I have no idea. Um, so, this research was a little bit difficult uh, because I had to like find departments that were like kind of comparable and local and things like that and then find budgets that were itemized to the point where I could see these things pulled out. When I ran those comparisons, Greenfield fires over time as budgeted, I don't know what their actual expenses end up being, but as budgeted uh, was 7.3%, Northampton fire 8.4%. <coughs> I looked at Deerfield PD's budget um, proposed for FY24. It came in right at like 8% overtime ratio to full-time salaries. Um, and with, with this recalculation now that we have those 10 people, that it's an 8% thing. So I, I don't know whether this is a good metric to hang our hat on in perpetuity because there's so many different variables there, but it seems like we are pretty consistent with other public safety agencies. Um, and then New Bedford EMS, I mean, I put them in there because they're a standalone EMS, but 26.5%. That just tells me that they need to hire more full-time staff. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, but uh, actually though, what's budgeted and what's expended is not, is not a good comparison because John is, um, you know, I think he budgets at forty thousand, and he's in the early, in the low twenties usually for actual expenditure. So, and that's and it's hard to do police because you know that's if you go rests or. Well, and police or, are tough too because you have state police to back you up, and if you have two people on shift, you know, overnight, and one person calls out sick, you, you know, you're, it doesn't mean you can't pro provide police <coughs> coverage anymore. You still have one person. We staff minimum two people 24 seven and both are vital as you know if you have one second of of time out you need to find coverage for that one second so i i think it, the i will reiterate that when it comes to overtime you know the problems are if you're using it as a substitute for hiring a full-time person right so if you've got two employees both doing 60 hours a week of work in your office, hire that third person, or um, it creates burnout. So your employees are being force held or things like that, um, and they become unsafe and it decreases morale. Right now, at our levels, you know, a thousand hours um, a year across 10 employees over all 12 months, um, you know, I keep averaging it out, but it's per employee two hours a week on average. And it's not affecting burnout from what we can see, right? We have enough time off in between days that if somebody's available, that additional extra little bit of overtime that we can provide them creates an incentive for the employees to remain flexible, you know, around their schedules. So if there's an opportunity to stay for a couple hours, they're able to, um, and it rewards those people for stepping up that way. And then it allows our department to have some flexibility. So with these last minute call outs, you know, understanding that we're gonna provide some overtime means that, okay, we can ebb and flow last minute. We have a late call, we have multiple calls. We're gonna call somebody in um, uh, when they can, but until then somebody's gonna have to stay. Um, gives us that flexibility that um, we wouldn't if we cut that overtime <coughs> budget. So Zoe, why, what, and this is a tough question. Yeah. Why, why are there not more third, third services out there? And, and, and because, and, and you kept saying, and, and, I'm, and, I'm, and, and this is, and maybe it just kind of hit me when you're, so, you, and listen to you talk, but 
if because we you have to have two people go run on the ambulance, right? We that's a that's a given. Yeah. So now, if we added, we would have to add at least another person, but then you're still not guaranteeing that you don't have overtime, right? So if you added <coughs> a third person on shift, right, then you you could you would probably eliminate your but then then you were being you technically benefits. overstaffed, right? So then you get into conversation about EMS fire. So you're right. It you you would have to if you added a third person to shift, you would conceivably eliminate the overtime you incur when somebody calls out sick or goes home sick or something like that. But you wouldn't address the overtime that happens when you have that call right before the end of your shift Just and you're held over and things like that. The only way to yeah. eliminate overtime is right to over hire and then you have overlapping crews. So, you know, there's always somebody who's going to be on for at least another two hours and they can take the call. Um, the the reason why there aren't many EMS third services is because EMS is a relatively young profession. It was created in the 70s um, and out of the Department of Transportation and really started as volunteers, right? Uh, ambulance squads and then became a more professional organization. And that coincided with um, fire regulations and things stop burning. We get fire code now. So we have sprinklers and we have alarms and we have building code and things like that. So we were staffing fire departments for a certain level of fire response, which dropped off precipitously. And then we had EMS coming up. And so a lot of these fire departments pivoted to an EMS role. And we've already got people in station. They were already first responding. And over time, they've just kind of morphed into that. Um, a lot of times now when you see departments, fire departments take on the EMS role, uh, it is for a couple reasons. One is to address things like um, inefficient, in, uh, insufficient private EMS coverage. So we see that happening in Greenfield, it's what happened in Northampton, it's what's happening in Hadley now. They were receiving services from a private EMS company that was for profit and they said, no, 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 we want to do this ourselves. Much like Deerfield EMS did, right? Uh, many years ago mm -hmm. about adding staff. Um, the other reason is a little bit of uh, double counting your staff and saying, all right, well, if we hire firefighter paramedics to 24 seven, we can staff an ambulance 24 seven. And when they're not on that ambulance call, if a fire call comes in, they can go on the fire call as well. And so you double train them in two disciplines um, and, and you basically count them twice mm -hmm. to be able to cover both. Um, I, I find in practice, I mean, I'm certainly biased in this, the application of that double counting is very tenuous because I feel like you need a certain amount of staffing to cover your EMS calls, you need a certain number of staffing to cover your police calls, and you need a certain number to cover your fire calls. And really, you should start by stacking that staffing up and then figuring out you know, well, that's what Northampton does. Where you can compress. Right, because they say, they say that they will have certain, that they're, they are a fire service first, and basically. Yeah. And, and although they run in three ambulances now, right? Plus an engine. Huh? Yeah. Plus an engine. Plus an engine. EMS. So. Yeah. So they, 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 they're, they won't, some, now some communities will just, if you have, need three buses to run, they run three buses, but Northampton will always maintain at least yeah the fire response yeah right and and you look at like amherst right where kind of high profile you know, we've had one firefighter responding in a fire truck to a structure fire because everybody else is busy on ambulance calls because on the books they're saying oh, we have six firefighters on duty so we can respond with you know three engines to a structure fire but actually really you know, they only have two firefighters on duty or one firefighter on duty because the others are committed to EMS. So I think if you've seen, every system's a little bit different, those ratios are a little bit different. Mm. Um, and so you're right, that economy of scale, 
if you're already paying for these people to be in the station, um, like having them do multiple duties. Um, but I think, I think that is it hen is coming home to roost for a lot of these departments that are finding out that they're actually understaffed um, when you know big things happen. And then we start relying on mutual aid and that's what mutual aid is for. Um, I, yeah, go ahead, Carolyn. No, I, well, I, I know Tim asked, had um, sent you some questions on the SWAT stuff. If, is, is that, that's eight hours, do you backfill for that? So that is, so that is six hours a month of training per and six hours total six hours per person it's the training is a six hour block every month okay. um and people there are three people on department and they attend it as they're all full timers they attend it as part of that week's 40 hours if it doesn't have a negative impact on our primary ambulance staffing so it might be the type of thing where they are they are on the second truck that day and so they are duty assigned to that training as part of that day you know and then i'm here and so then i can cover the ambulance in their absence or things like that the priority is always to staff in the ambulance so we have repeatedly been like hey you can't go to training this month or, or something like that um you know I, I need you in the station and that's that's part of that because if, if we did if you did three persons um that's 18 hours um plus the ambulance wear and tear on the ambulance for 12 months that's you know that that would cut down some of the there's the, it, there's no there's no backfill there's no additional expense in backfill that we're incurring there's no overtime that we're incurring for those for those things the only time where we would incur like additional cost would be if there was an incident, right? Just like the head-on collision in Greenfield where South County went up, right? And, and so like if there was an incident in a, neighbor, a neighboring community, we would be responding mutual aid and whether they were on duty or something like that, it would be like that type of thing. Um, but, but we're talking about, I, you know, I think there were like five incidents last year and not everybody responds to every one and sometimes it doesn't involve ems at all and so we're not even you know called to those things so i i i think there's this perception that 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 thing is more involved than it is i know like the hazmat and the tech rescue teams are significantly more involved so maybe that's where some of this like perception is coming from because i know they train a lot and I think the individual departments are responsible for backfilling them or the state reimburses or something um, uh, but this is yeah so your first statement in the October you budgeted overtime at one point but now you see that it's not quite there uh, so is it going down I, I, from that original point yeah, so I think since since we've since we added the additional people, we reduced the overtime by thirty percent, and since January first and the new schedule, we've addition we've lowered it an additional thirty percent. So this this draft budget, this version version eight um, that I pushed out for this meeting, I feel is better representative of what we should expect. Um, it amounts to a reduction of fifteen thousand dollars. Um, that is 30% of that that line item previously. Um, he, further down in the budget, it looks like electric had never been budgeted before, and then this year was budgeted at 5000 That's when you, there's that like service hookup when you build on property that's like a flat fee, and then it's supposed to switch over to them reading the meter. Well, they just started reading our meter. Okay. So that amount is... Now they're trying to play catch up. That amount is our actual, like, okay. the actual cost before they were just flat. <clears throat> flat Any chance of getting a grant to put solar panels up on the roof or in the field? <clears throat> just put it out there, I mean. And spin the building around? I was going to say, ask Kip about which direction the building is yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
Um, we're, that seems, the electric bill, I mean, I'm, I'm not, it's only a few hundred dollars, but the aggregation, you know, Deerfield aggregation is, you know, keeps the, you know, rates, it's not just some nine kilowatts. That's a lot of electricity, actually. Uh, so I would say, what, what is our It's a building that runs 24-7. Yeah, but it's still a lot of. 24-7 heat, like, you know. Oh, is it heat, too? Well, I mean, like, we're running, or propane, but I'm saying, like, we're running all of the HVAC, we're running the lights, we're running the the you IT infrastructure. I, I welcome Kevin to, you know, look into it, making sure that we're getting that rate, but I don't know why we wouldn't. We are a town. Yeah. Town building. Do we have... Energy efficient light bulbs? They're all LED, yeah. Yeah. The yeah, place could be better fine. insulated for sure. But you get what you pay for. You paid zero dollars. I can't complain. It's right? more warm and it shouldn't be that bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we'll know what the actual bills are by next year. Yep. Um, uh, the other thing in that line item, the the IV pumps, initially we had put in as a capital request and I was in my brain fog. That's because we requested it previously for $21,000 and so basically I just copy and pasted it with the new numbers. Uh, Brenda accurately pointed out that the 7,000 or the 7,500 for those pumps is below the capital request threshold, so why don't you just put it in the line item? Um, that was getting paid for out of retained earnings anyway, so version eight um, increase the medical supplies line item to include the cost of those pumps and then increased the retained earnings application the equivalent amount so there was a net zero change but uh, and then we retracted the capital request for the pumps okay so that Zach these numbers that you have for like 2018 2019 those are the actual expenditures for each of those years or those are budgeted that, those are the budget amounts so do we have what do we actually do we do they, do they also give you what you're actually I have I have the expense reports from the town um, when I get them in timely manner I I usually forward them out to everybody um, but these these calculations are all based off of yeah. um, actual expenses um, so when, when you when you um, when you submit your invoices do you have specific line items or Every single one of these bolded line items so has a on, on your not on this. This is for this is for yeah. So all of the medical supplies, ALS medications, oxygen. You notice how they're left justified. Oh, I see. All of those have an individual account number associated. So when we do the warrant and the bills, it's yep, yep. yeah, it's the same one. So okay. we we track it down to that line item level. So so that's how many line items that you have. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's that's what it looks like. You can see all the account numbers and yeah. the line okay. items. Yeah, it'd be nice to see what we actually spent on each each of the line items also. Um I can I can cut and paste those things in. I've got a much larger spreadsheet that includes those things, and yeah. it just becomes a, a little unwieldy. So, yeah, it, and, and and I learned all long time ago, it's not the, you know, when you look at a budget, sometimes it's it's which line items that are important for you to look at. Mm -hmm. If something's not changing from year to year to year to year, it's like, hmm, maybe I should look at that budget, mm -hmm. get that line mm -hmm. closer. So. Than, than like the town clerks on our election because every other year there's an election so the numbers go whoosh, it's like yeah. everybody calls it well, thirty percent increase is it well, well and nobody's been looking at it for you <laughs> right we have election this year so yeah um, but sometimes so I don't sometimes I you know the stuff that had be big increases don't mean a lot to me but sometimes the thing that had zero increases are the things I kind of look at yeah I, I tried to make a concerted effort for this year I got a little lazy in 23 okay. um, cut and cut and pasting so um, okay. I, I try to look close in 24 um, thank you John. yeah absolutely some of these two are like you know intercept fees 
never change, but that's because, you know, at $250 a piece, I say, I don't know, four worst case scenario, and no. knowing that it's just going to roll over in the enterprise fund anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but. I, 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 I would, I, I think it's important, Joey, for us to know is that I, I, I don't think the budgets are going to get easier the next few years. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd be really looking at your at your budget real close and over this next year, next six, seven months, see 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 where we can look at savings. You know, if there's something we can do differently with a schedule or you know, maybe maybe you have something creative in that, that brain of yours on on something, who knows? You know. Maybe you can use a flying car, I don't know. Does a flying really car powered by hydrogen, I don't know. Does the town committee kind of rate with Comcast? Uh, <coughs> no. Well, we did save money uh, this last, uh, we switched. Off of Comcast? <coughs> no, there, yeah, some, it was the internet we hooked up differently. The town in their agreement with Comcast is at every municipal building gets free basic cable, but because we also have internet, you know, they're like, oh, you don't qualify for the free basic right. cable, you have to pay the, the, the normal rate for it. The nerve. And that's, the, and because everything, all of our medical records, everything is secured in the cloud, right? So there's nothing on site, there's no like malware to worry about. But it means that our internet connection is like business class with a cell backup and, and all that thing. So it's it's yeah, more expensive I, than it would be well, otherwise. Yeah, it's not like a home home service. I mean, I wish it was. Like, geez. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's pretty crazy. But yeah. Uh, what else that, we got for questions for Zach? So we. It's gonna be a hard. Uh, you're telling me, Bob. Uh, Try having it for a whole life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Zoe, I think I, you know, let me look at um, our the pay records again, and I don't know, maybe we can come up with we just I, if we could I, cut a little bit more, it would be very helpful. I, Carolyn, I spent the better part of five and a half, six hours today manually going through. EPRO scheduling records, scheduled overtime, payroll records, payroll summary cover sheets, holiday schedules, uh, appointment dates. Um, I the we I there's there's no fluff in that line item, and I went back today to to recalculate everything with a few more months information, and that's how I was able to see you know we did realize that nice change come January 1st based on what we expected um, but I, like I, if we if we need to find money there's there's nothing left in that line item um, the the next step if you want to cut that line item is cutting services at times and I think we're gonna run afoul of the Department of Public Health if we do that um, it, like if the town has to find money and it has to come from South County EMS of all places, then no, we're just asking each department to cut, you know, like um, a few thousand dollars. I, you know. I, then lower the benefits costs, renegotiate those, or maybe we need to reduce hours at the library, or maybe not, you know, reduce inflation so cola isn't so big, or do a new class comp. Or, you know, like there's everything, everything in that box up there, personnel costs, are like actual costs. Um, there's definitely no fluff in there and we're definitely not like lying in anybody's pockets. I think the only place, to Tom's point, um, would be operating expenses. And I can, I can add in our, our expenses to date and, and previous year's expenses to see if anybody else can find something I missed. No, I, 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 sorry, I, I mean, after we added those other people, I thought we would see less on the overtime budget. And, and I know it is less, but I thought it'd be 
more luck, more a greater savings than what we actually captured. So and and so now you have to kind of go back and say, so you so we saved, we saved. $30,000 and yet we took on two um, more. we took on almost $200,000 worth of salary. Oh, we've reduced employee burnout. Uh, we were averaging we were averaging twice as much overtime per employee under the 8 hours than we are under the 8 employees than we were under the 10 employees. So you're right, like people cost money plus those benefits. Um, but the individual like yeah, like it's they're intersecting lines or whatever. Um, the other piece you got to look at is the people. So when you force them to work over time and they're going on additional work, additional hours, additional safety risk, additional risk for workers' comp, additional risk of burnout, then you've got replacement costs to hire and retrain the employees. I mean, there are multiple factors that go into it. We talked about it earlier, being able to find skilled people to come work. I, you know, the other thing too is, you know, we <clears throat> added those, when did we add those full-timers? What did I say? March of... Mm -hmm. Did you pull some money out of per diem? So, uh, so that was funding. part of it, yeah. So we, so we funded it from the per diem line items that we weren't spending, because per diems just aren't available. That's why we regionalized, right? Um, mm -hmm. But the other thing too is, since we added that, We've also seen step increases for everybody plus COLA increases for everybody. And because overtime is a multiplier of one and a half, mm -hmm. you know, those increases. Are, but like, I think between step and COLAs, we're averaging like 5% salary increases every year or something. So that's actually a 7% increase for those overtime hours. Um, so that's the other reason why that line item is increasing over time is because it's just reflecting the changes in salaries. No, I was just, I, again, I was just saying what I, I thought we'd see a greater increase, you know, that was a pretty significant adding people was a significant cost. Yeah. And I thought that we'd see more more savings. Let me and 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 that's just you know what I was saying, you know. Mm -hmm. and well, I, I, I don't disagree with anything you said about the Right. I, I you know, I had gone to the finance committee last year and said we're gonna add the two people and that will reduce our overtime by half. And of course we you know 30, I'm not saying a 30% reduction isn't good, but it's not half. Um, okay, plus 115. Is that, that's uh, what we were looking at. Oh, well, we have reduced, but we've seen what's our, what we see as an increase in calls year to year? 10%. So we're providing services 10% greater than what we did a year ago. So it figures into it. It's not like we close the doors Friday in town office because we don't want to or can't service people. We don't have that option. Right. And it's not like we've asked for, you know, a a additional everything to cover the 10% more calls. I, yeah, I, like if if this change had happened if this change had happened in FY22 with those personnel expenses, the salaries and the steps and the colas and stuff, the reduction of adding those two people in overtime would have been a savings of. What is that? Sixteen uh, percent or something like that. So, I, the. Yeah, I like. We're saving overtime, we're increasing employee benefit costs, we're decreasing burnout, we're increasing reliability of staffing. Like it's, I guess that's all the, uh, mm -hmm. those are the eternal discussions, right? Well, well let's, let's try to look at, you know, uh, the, re you know, for next month's agenda again, it's just, let's look at what is happening on the schedule with um, 
you know, the new scheduling? I, for, you know, how, what's it generating for I, over time? Yeah, so I, I can, like I said, I spent multiple hours today crunching these numbers. Before the schedule, we were averaging 54 hours a month of overtime. After the new schedule, we're averaging 38 hours a month of overtime. So I can re-crunch those numbers in another four weeks, but I'm assuming it's going to be right around that 38 hour mark. Um, this is all, we've already done the schedule for, what's next month, April? There is, there is not a... So you, went, so you went from 77 hours down to 38 hours? 54, to, well, 77... Prior to the... Yes, right. So we went from people. 77 hours a month with eight full-timers to 38 hours a month. That's with, 50 percent. With 10 full-timers. Um, Hours-wise, it's 50 percent. And that is for what, I, what I'm calling scheduled overtime, so that's like backfill. That, that's not counting late calls or you know holdovers or things like that things um, are outside of your control yeah um we've already done the schedule for april we do it the 15th of the previous month there is not a single hour of scheduled overtime in april right now that includes people on vacation and full timers sliding around and moving in like there is no scheduled overtime by the time the dust settles at the end of April, with people calling out sick or going home sick and moving people around and holding people over, we're going to end up with about 38 hours across those four weeks um, total. In the April schedule, before anything happened, how many of, of those shifts are you scheduled? To, to I'm here Monday through Friday. Um, there are, I, I would have to pull up the schedule. Um, the full timers, if everybody is at work, the additional capacity in the full time schedule covers a second ambulance three days a week. So the other four days a week are staffed with per diem employees. If somebody assigned to A1 is on vacation or out sick, um, even just on short notice, we will move people from A2, those full timers, into those A1 slots. Those overlap with the days I'm already here, and so I can fill in for them for those, for those schedules. Um, and then there's another two days during the week where I'm here with the per diems. Those are all filled up, um, but if some, one of them, you know, gets held out over, calls out, then I can fill in there as well. So like, it's Right now, the schedule is full. By the end of April, I will have covered shifts. I cover about one to two a week, typically, when the dust settles. Um, or like gaps in coverage, four hours, or you know, the two hours in the morning, things like that. I guess what would be helpful is, is let's take the April schedule the way you have, and then when our, when we, have at, the, another at, meeting. At, at the end of April, what, fill it fill it in with who actually worked. What happened? Right. How's that? Does that make sense, Zoe? Yeah, we 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 modify the schedule as things yeah. happen, so it'll be easy to just take a picture today and then take a picture at the yeah. end of April. Yeah. Right. Or you could show. Well, we'll meet April 18th, so you can show March to explain what you've done and where you've covered. Show two yeah. weeks. Uh, yeah. You can show two weeks of it. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Right. And that way, we can understand it, and we can also then argue that we don't argue. It is, here. No, we have we have mutually satisfying we, conversations. We will feel we will yes, but you have to adv um, have, well, advocate well mm -hmm. advocate like for the correct um, amount in the overtime. Just like a book club meeting, exactly. Yeah. Never argue. You have better. You have. We have three Smooth counties. Smooth sailing, baby, right through. That uh, I know. At least Thirty two minutes. Towns, That's what yeah. I meant to tell you. Beautiful. Yep. But Guys are in and out. I know boom, Sunderland boom, boom. and Deerfield are going to have a hard time. So. Those are me. Do be careful We're about them. That's what we're going to talk about. With Sunderland's nine percent school cost. Waverly should be all set. They get a lot of pot shops. And there and we have a hundred and sixty thousand dollars worth of five. Smith Volk just popped Car up. Carol, next Carol week. was funny at the last meeting. She was talking about, <coughs> well, we're going to get a, something for the people that don't pay taxes in Deerfield and Deerfield and something about Whiteley that are in our thing and get those. So, we're gonna, so bottom line, Deerfield's going to pay more 
Fire Branch is going to pay a little bit more because Deerfield's going to pay a little bit less. Hang on. No, we're just getting the waiver. No, we're going to get more state aid. We're getting more state aid. <laughs> That'll be good. Okay. Um, you should also take a look at. I know it doesn't affect this, but this whole school choice thing. Uh, that's. I, I, I have already advocated <laughs> to hire someone, not just well, to retire somebody, but somebody that's really smart. Right? Somebody who's not into smart, education, right? they they figure it out. I know. If you want to talk to uh, a loser. Uh, as far as. Go to South Deerfield Schools. Exactly. Uh, there's nothing secret or nefarious in the schedule, so oh. I have no problem. What is it that we are looking for in it? What, Zach, what we need, or Zoe, overtime. what we need is what you schedule, yeah. okay? And then what actually happens at the end of the month. Yeah, we average about 38 hours of overtime. Right. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so can you so show us how, I, how I got that original schedule for March look like? Yep. And then next to that, what actually happens. So, okay. And actually, so, all you got to do is highlight any time somebody, there was a change. So if, if paramedic yeah. Lancome is scheduled for yeah. 40 hours or yeah. works all 40 hours, that's fine. Yeah. It's when people are calling out, you know, was it filled by a per diem? Did you have to cover the yeah. shit? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're just looking to see what those changes are. Sounds great. Um, I can also generate payroll reports in our scheduling system that will break down. I don't need that. Hours scheduled, hours of overtime, things like that. No, just, 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 okay. just I, as long as we have your schedule, Okay. And, and, and then, all right, this, see, so, all right, and, and say, okay, Tom, this is what the schedule, this is how I scheduled it for the month of March. We all agreed that this, these are shifts. Okay, this sick time, this was sick time, this was filled by per diem. This was vacation time filled by. Okay. And, and, I, and, and again, I don't, the, the other stuff may be too technical. Zoe, I, I and I, I don't want to be Paul Stammers that took you all afternoon on a Saturday, and <laughs> yes, right? Or Blarney blow up, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. On yeah. A Sunday, or yeah. it doesn't have to be technical, it just has to be, yeah. yeah. Something just, so two of your medics are due to get off at three o'clock, they picked up a call at 2 45, they didn't get back in the station until okay. 4 30, right? Okay, um, yeah, okay, in your spare time. We just need to do that for a couple, two or three months so we understand what's going on. Yeah, um, it's pretty simple. Florida. It, yeah, no problem. I'm thinking it might not catch uh, hours here or there, like a late call. So, you know, if, it might stay on the schedule until 3 and then on their timesheet, you know, it's 345, late call number, blah, 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 blah. But that should be... That should be minimal. Yeah. Give us the first. Have give, have us uh, the first try, and then we can tell you. We what can works. walk through it. Or, or or it love it. Love it. You know we what can I mean? pick any four weeks in between now and April 18th. Do they have to be contiguous? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we. <laughs> Great. Love it. He had, He does. I I think that makes it makes it simple for me. Yeah. Just to, to, to understand this, that's how the, the police, when I asked the chief, I, I mean, you can give me all that other stuff, that's fine, but just make it simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, colors are nice. Sick, red. Vacation. Charts and graphs. Yeah. No, 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 no graphs. Just spreadsheet with colors. Circles and yeah, I'm, spies. I, I'm really easy. Well, yeah. Any other business to come before the... I'll entertain Pardon? a motion. Do we, do we have any more, more stuff? No, I'm all set. I did want to publicly thank South Deerfield Fire for stepping up with the UTV oh, and yeah. working with you to get that done. Enthusiastically, even. Yeah. I, I greatly appreciate that interagency cooperation and their willingness to go I do that it. to yeah. ensure patient safety. I think that's a big step forward, and oh no, I don't make sure to yeah. acknowledge that. Thank you, but thank you for reminding me. Ha Hatfield, did you hear anything from Hatfield? No, not a peep. I have. Oh, okay. Anything you want to share? No, no. no. Okay. Okay. Um, no. And there's been no word. We there's been nothing with Conway. Uh, no, I, actually, I did talk to uh, uh, someone the other day, a chief the other day. Okay. And. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think they understand that they're more than welcome. And I said, I said for, because we were talking about Hatfield, and I said, 
to bring on Hatfield, basically we would have to add another bus, yeah. full-time bus. And so we would have to basically increase by at least six or eight people. Mm -hmm. And to do so, do so I, I said, Joey did some calculations, about $800,000, and I'm just talking numbers. And, and if you look at the, the breakdowns, Hatfield would be about four to four hundred and fifty thousand dollars and the rest of the communities we'd have to pony up twenty to thirty percent more. Now, so is it advantageous? Not in that scenario. Why would we anyway? And then we talked about Conway and I said, I believe with Conway we would handle with the staff that we have available and in and, and for them it's just a you know, we plug them in just the same as way as everybody else is and you know and I, I forgot what 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 your what was your assessment might be a ninety thousand hundred thousand something like something that. Something like that. And I said, you know, you'd probably be around the assessment that that you know Whiteley's paying. And, and but we, I don't think we'd have to have we would have any big changes bringing Con and because you look at Conway, if you look at it from you look at where their population center is, it's not over on Haydenville or. The Asheville Town Line. It's more towards. And that's what we did with South County when we looked at South County. Where, where's our population center? So, and are there outlying areas? Sure, there's outlying areas in our present system. <coughs> Carolyn's house, my house. If you go to a reservoir in Whiteley, those are kind of outlying areas, but we handle those. So they take ten minutes instead of five minutes. Yeah, because up your sh and it's still yeah, shorter than the alternative. 40, yeah. <laughs> Forty-five minutes or an hour before. Right. So, so yeah, I had a talk with him, and and, and it was just a general because he had read or heard about Hatfield, and I just happened to run into him yesterday on the on the campus. So, okay, it was a good conversation. And Excellent. and Thank those you. numbers are easy to crunch because I got spreadsheets and formulas for it. So, yeah, yeah. And, I said, but but I said for you guys, it'd be easier that way. So if we were to take on another community like Hatfield, it'd be easier if there was a couple communities that came in. Agreed. Versus one community. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the other thing about Conway is you would go. I assume we would go right from here. Versus yeah. if we do something with Hatfield, we were looking at potentially positioning a. That second truck being second down truck there, yeah. Further south in the And then splitting our service system. area, depending on right? And Gary, you were at Gary's house. Yeah. Thank you for that invite, Gary. Appreciate sure. it. We'll just build on to the side of the machine shop and, right. you know. Uh, well, maybe they know how to be a machine. He'll teach them how to be a machinist. Right. <laughs> that version 8 of the budget, um, with that lowered over time, I have not mm. pushed out or shared with anybody um, because I wanted to, I just finished that today, so I wanted to share it here. Everybody good with me sharing that with the towns or do we want to keep the other budget that's already been presented with Sunderland and Deerfield already? Well, we haven't, the select board hasn't voted the budget, so, and we wanted to lower the overtime based on, you know, what we had been told about lowering the overtime with when we added additional staff. So, um, I don't... More discussion to be had. Yeah, more discussion to be had. I gotta... Well, you gotta push the number out. I mean, yeah. but I still think we should need to talk. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I, you know, if I have more under, of a concrete understanding of the overtime, then I can advocate better. I just feel like it's still a little bit high. So we're we're like ninety thousand over our budget total. That's not bad. It's for us. It's not. It, it's really not, and that's not applying any free cash. So that's and and we have a formula for for applying free cash. So, but it's it'd be it'd be nicer to bring that down so that. Um, Oh, I know Frontier. We we still don't have Smith folks. If there's, oh, we don't. Like we I haven't said, heard from them. Like I said, ours is one hundred sixty thousand. All of a sudden, just showed up more than we budgeted. 
Yeah, and we have a perk, and, and we had we and we got we got hit. We got we got we got a, our assessment for Frontier went up, and our assessment for Franklin Tech went went up one or two. So you know, and and the assessment numbers for Franklin Tech are tough because I mean, like Conway paid like what, twenty seven thousand dollars a student or something, and in Greenfield paid like worth six. every minute of it. Huh? Worth every dollar of it. Oh, I'm not. No, no. I'm not. I'm not saying. I just don't. I, I don't understand. I. I don't. I. I never understand how kids can be a different value. You know, the state. The state when they're way they they figure stuff to me is is crazy. Right. It's a convoluted formula they use. Well, oh, uh, he said. He value said. Value of the town. The value. Of, um, yeah, I know. That's what I was appealing crazy. because our our value is way off. Well, he said earlier he, he was talking about school choice, and 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 me because unfortunately I've been around for a long time, but I am a dinosaur. Um, when when school choice started, it was five thousand dollars a student. Guess what yeah, it is today? Five thousand dollars a student. Okay, think about that. Yeah. Yeah, but that was from the nineties. Ninety three. Yes, I know. That's what I'm saying. I'm okay with school choice as long as the parents pay the difference between what it costs to educate the student and the 5000 the state gives you, like a tuition. And if you don't like that, move into the community where the school's located and pay the taxes to support it. And, and, and I'm not going to disagree with him. I'm not going to disagree with him. They want their cake and eat it too. Yes. Be because because we, we had, we had um, a, a family in Sunderland that, that school choice to um, leverage. And we had an override. For, for education, right? And the family had a, a vote no. They're, they're, and then they're told, well, Leverett, Leverett Elementary School was wonderful. They get crayons, they got paper, they got glue. We don't, they, whatever we want, they have there. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, <laughs> what does the sign in your yard say? Our, we, our tax rate is $12, $12 and theirs is 20 Yeah. And, and you can't, you, that's the inconsistency of school choice, and it's not if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I, it, it's just inconsistent because, oh, okay. So you're 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 willing you're not willing to pay in your community, but you'll take somebody else to pay in somebody else's community. I I don't understand that. Yeah, and then you're taking you're taking fam you're taking typically you're taking parents that are very involved with their kids, and you're taking them out of their home their home community and and where they're needed. And you're, or where they can advocate for the kids, and you're moving into another school district. And honestly, we've got four elementary schools that aren't full on their own. They're filling them up with school choice instead of looking at combining those four elementary schools into yeah. Yeah. two yeah. or three to reduce the costs across all the communities. Because the kids are all going to be together come seventh grade anyhow. Yeah. Well, that, that's. I know it's not an issue for us to, to resolve here, issue. but. That's a big it becomes a big discussion on you keep looking at costs and to Tom's comment, budget's going to get tougher and tighter. All right. Thank you, Dylan. Of course. I'm, I'm so involved in I heard I am not sharing this budget until the no, next you, meeting. No, sure. no, you can share it. Push the budget out? Okay. Yeah. Share the budget. Great. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 720. Oh, uh, next one. meeting is April 18th. I may or may not be here.